Stars from Different Skies by Kent Sean. Dad, last night, a star fell from the sky and I caught it. My daughter Ashley says, head still beneath the covers. Cool dream, kiddo. Wait a minute. Did you have oven mitts on? I bet that thing was hot. I'm rewarded with a muffled giggle. Where is it? I hope it won't melt the floors. We just redid the tile. Dad. She says in muffled exasperation. Come on, kiddo. Time to get ready for school. I gently tug the covers from her head, revealing a tangled mass of brown hair and sleepy, blinking eyes. She hugs me. Her slender brown arms go all the way around me now. Ashley is 12 and already as tall as her mother. She rolls from her roost among heavy covers and stuffed friends and tiptoes across the room. As she passes, she says, Top drawer. And floats into the Jack and Jill bathroom she shares with her brother. She picks up her toothbrush, investigates the mirror, and she's gone, glitched out. Her bright eyes go hazy. Ashley is blind to her face in the mirror. I wonder if she sees her falling stars now. Wherever she is, she's free, unbounded by the gossamer but impenetrable walls of her autism. Honey, no response. Need to get going, sweetie. Come on, brush your teeth. Nothing. I walk in and gently help her put toothpaste on the toothbrush, wet it, and place it back in her hand. She smiles up at me, noticing me for the first time since I entered the bathroom. Huh? Ten minutes and three glitches later, we've tamed the wild tangle of her hair and I leave her to change into school clothes. She needs her privacy. She's a preteen after all. A truth of which I am often verbally reminded, small hands on slender hips and gravity on the elfin face so comical that even the memory of it brings a smile. I have to get ready as well. As I leave back through Ashley's bedroom, right as I'm about to go out the door, I see a glimmer of light from the corner of my eye. It's Ashley's top dresser drawer cracked just a sliver. For a moment, there's a pulse of silver light. The shock drives me back a step and the hair stand up on my neck. Last night, a star fell from the sky and I caught it. In the kitchen, my son is demolishing his eggs with ruthless economy. Henry has already scrubbed and dressed 20 minutes early and will be jumping on the trampoline in seconds. He heads to the bus stop each day, heart pounding and out of breath, a satisfied grin on his face. He pauses his wolfing and rushes to give me a hug. His embrace is fierce and present, a sharp contrast to the gentle and distant draping of arms that is my daughter's hug. My wife Karen stands over the sink, wringing her hands. Brady, it's not natural. Shouldn't they put her in a special school? She's more and more spaced out every day. I am distracted. Silver light and the wave of fear that accompany that shred my concentration. I stole my laptop and files in my briefcase, eyes unfocused. Could I have imagined it? I'd buy that if I'd not been struck with such a deep, superstitious terror. Could be just a toy in the drawer, one of her Furbies coming to sudden life, digital eyes flashing. No, not that. The light was not something so mundane as a toy. It was something strange, unnatural. My hand slaps the dish where I usually put my keys. They're gone. The light strobes again, bouncing from the hallway off the glass doors to my office, chasing shadows across the family room. If Karen sees anything, she does not let on. Maybe we should rethink the medication. Yeah, then she can be a zombie all the time? Come on, Karen. She's passing all her classes, she just needs a little help getting there. If only there was a way to find Ashley in there, wherever she goes. If only I could take her hand and walk her through. You're going to be late. I jump at Karen's voice. Henry is on the trampoline, though I didn't see him go. The tramp springs squeak in time with the crazed electronic songs blaring from Henry's cell phone. I call it evil circus music. Karen bustles back to our bedroom. I think she might be crying. Ashley walks in, hand trailing along the furniture, up on her tiptoes. She notices me an inch before collision and smiles. Look under the car, Dad. Just behind the tire. She sits in front of impatient oatmeal, grown cold waiting for her. What, honey? Ashley scoops a bite of oatmeal and holds it in front of her mouth. She's glitched out again. Eyes look through the kitchen walls, a 10 million yard stare. What's under the car, Ashley? Huh? Oatmeal drips from her spoon. There is a silver streak in her hair. Was it there before? I head for the front door with rising horror, heart pounding. As I go through the entryway, shadows leap ahead, rimmed with silver light. When my count hits triple digits, I kneel, seeing nothing. She couldn't know where my keys were. I worked late last night, 
She was already in pajamas in her room when I came to kiss her goodnight. Instant relief when no keys are evident on the pressed concrete of the driveway. Just behind the tire. I know what I'll find before my questing fingers close on the hard metal. The kid's bus is long gone, trundling up the hill, vibrating with juvenile energy. Finally, my wife leaves the house, off to the gym. I should be at work, but instead, I'm parked on a side street, watching the house. There's something in my precious daughter's room, and though it turns my guts to water, I'm going in to face it. I fumble the keys when I try to open the door with shaking, clammy hands. Before I can get past the entryway, the silver flash greets me. The light is brighter now. The strobe effect makes me squint and leaves dancing after images like swirling stars across my field of vision. Last night, a star fell from the sky, and I caught it. Fear thickens the atmosphere, but I press through. I stand in front of Ashley's dresser drawer. The light is strobing faster, three breaths between flashes, now two. I'm sweating through my shirt and I tug my tie loose, my breath coming in ragged gasps. Go ahead, Dad. I nearly jump from my skin. Ashley is standing in the doorway to her room, which is impossible since I watched her board the bus not 15 minutes ago. Why aren't you in school, honey? I barely get the words out, my heart drumming at stroke tempo. I am, but I'm here too. You can't be in two places at once, Ashley. The light strobes faster. I'm always in two places at once, Dad. She glitches out, staring right through me. The light strobes faster and faster. There are more silver streaks in her hair, and her eyes reflect the silver glow back, magnifying it. I go to her and take her hands. I have to get you away from this thing. What's happening to you? A star fell from the sky, and I caught it. Now I can see everything. Like I saw your keys this morning. Like I can see inside your head. You can catch the star too, Dad. You can see what I see. She snaps back to the here and now and pulls me over to the dresser. The light is continuous, the drawer blazing. It's okay. I wish on a star. Reach inside, Dad. Please. Then I won't be alone in here anymore. I lift my hand and pull the drawer open. Now a blaze of light so potent I worry I'll not be able to reach into it. That I must be repelled or incinerated. Please, Dad? I look into her eyes. I'm afraid. She nods, her face sad. I know, Dad. I'm afraid a lot, too. My hand dips into the molten silver, and all at once... I'm in a different place. Seas of grass roll in the wind, and clouds like cotton mountains race across an azure sky. Ashley's hand is in mine, and she's smiling. We walk through the grass, the clouds tease us with shapes and patterns, and I watch Ashley close, looking for the glitch. It never comes. From the corner of my eye, I can see the two of us sitting Indian style on the floor of her bedroom, staring off into the ether. Between us, a silver orb like glass and fire all at once. I'm glad you came, Dad. Me too, kid. Me too.